Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are still working on King John and we get to hear a little more from Constance today and then we get to hear more from Constance again tomorrow because she has a lot to say just now. Um, her son Arthur has been taken prisoner by the English side and she feels that there is no recourse left for her but to kill herself as a result of the fact that her son is gone and she will never see him again. So yesterday we had her um, putting the men in, in their place for calling her crazy because you should never call a grieving woman crazy or actually any woman crazy or any man crazy for that matter because you don't know what's going on in their lives. And um, they're like, come on, she, she's, she'd been ripping her hair out sort of and they're like, come on, you know, like bind up your hairs. They keep saying bind up your hairs. And she says, yes, that I will. And wherefore will I do it? I tore them from their bonds and cried aloud, Oh, that these hands could so redeem my son as they have given these hairs their liberty. But now I envy at their liberty and will again commit them to their bonds because my poor child is a prisoner. And Father Cardinal, I have heard you say that we shall see and know our friends in heaven. If that be true, I shall see my boy again. For since the birth of Cain, the first male child to him that did but yesterday suspire there was not such a gracious creature born. But now will canker sorrow eat my bud and chase the native beauty from his cheek. And he will look as hollow as a ghost, as dim and meager as an ague's fit, and so he'll die. And rising so again, when I shall meet him in the court of heaven, I shall not know him. Therefore never... Never must I behold my, my pretty Arthur more. So, unpacking this a little bit, um, she says that she, she wanted her hands to be able to free her son the same way that her hands were able to free her hair from her head. But now since her son is a prisoner, the, the sight of all this hair ripped out of her head is making her sick and she wishes she could put it back again. But then she's like, you know, once my son dies and I die, I'll see him in heaven and won't that be great because he was so wonderful. But since he's been taken prisoner and I've been so sad and woeful, when he dies, he's not gonna look anything like himself. And so I won't recognize him when I get to heaven and, and, so I'm doomed to never see my kid again. To which one of them, I think, it's not Pandolf, it might be, it might be the King of France, is like, come on, really? And she's like, hush your face, you don't have a kid. And then Cardinal Pandolf says, you're, you're really making too big a deal out of this, like you're just liking being sad and having a pity party. And then she has more thoughts on that, which we will get into tomorrow as we, finish up this spree of Constance in Act 3, Scene 3, as it is known in the folio, Act 3, Scene 4, as it is known in many other versions. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for more Constance. Mwah.